going everybody relentless gaming here and today we got another kind of showcase video because I just showcased this deck yesterday and I even titled it updated but this is the updated updated version I feel like this deck will never be finished and I never claimed it would be perfect but I'm playing it and I'm testing it and I'm going through trial and error with it I want it to be viable and ranked because I was playing in a ranked and it struggles a lot in some areas but I think I think I finally got something down so let me show you really quick the little changes I made before we get into these games. Okay, so let me show you the changes I've made. So if you want to know what this deck was like before, go watch the previous video. Uh, I'll have a time card right here down below to show you, so you or to link it over there so you guys can go watch that really quick. But let me just show you the things I took out and put in and the changes and the reasoning behind that. So let's start by what I took out. I took out the Vladimir because I felt like this deck should main focus should be Braum and yes I need to point out that I am still pretty new to this game and the main reason why I kept the Vladimir's in there was so I can use the Noxus spells and units and other stuff that came with it and I thought in order to use it I had to keep the Vladimir's in there but then I found out that I could just take the Vladimir's out but still use the units so I that was the first thing I fixed and then uh, the other thing I took out was the brittle steels because they f were taking up a lot of space and there would be games where I just couldn't get any units and my whole hand would just keep filling up with spells. So that was a really big problem. So one of the main focuses that I and changes I wanted to make to this build was to put more low cost units in so that I can have a better chance in the early game. I also took out the Blade's Edge. The main reason why I kept the Blade's Edge in there was to kind of give my Vladimir a little boost. Like, let's just say it needed one more stack to level up, then I would use the Blade's Edge. But since the Vladimir is out, we don't need it. We don't have any reason to use it. And plus, it was the same issue that I had with the Steel Brittles where my hand would just keep filling up with spells when I really needed units to be played. I don't remember if I had the Poros in in the last video, but this deck used to have Poros, but I took those out because there are much better units I can have in, for example, the Omen Hawks, and it also they were just not doing anything for me. They were more for throwaway cards, and they weren't working for me at all. I also took out Caught in the Cold because we don't really need that. Again, it was just taking up space. When I was looking for a unit, I would get a spell, and I just wanted to get rid of as many spells as possible, but also leaving in, just trying to keep that healthy balance, you know? I took out the Crimson Aristocrat. The reason I had the Crimson Aristocrat in in the first place was so if I pulled a Braum, I could put in the Crimson Aristocrat to give it that extra boost in damage. But to be honest, I should really not be relying on units for that because it, this just taking up space and my unit should be doing something else. And I have plenty of spells. And when I mean plenty, I mean plenty of spells to get my Braum to the damage and health and all that it needs to be. So the Crimson Aristocrat was not really doing any me, anything for me in that department other than taking up space. And then we also took out the Noxian Fervor because, again, one of the main flaws in this deck was I would keep getting spells and I did not have enough units, right? The main goal of this deck is to feed Braum, to try to get Braum in there early on. And I can't do that when I keep getting units. At least when I have units and I don't get a Braum till later, then those units are still doing something and keeping the playing field pretty even so that when I do eventually get Braum in, it's not already too late and they have too many high damage, high powered units in to where they can just take out my Braum or my Braum becomes useless. So the next thing I took out was the Warring Stones. And the reason I did that is because we don't have high cost units in this deck anymore. I think the highest cost unit deck we had in here was Trinomir and we took him out and I'll get to why we did that in a little bit. So the highest costing unit in this deck is five mana, which is not that bad. And Braum is only three and remember the main focus of this deck is Braum. So the Warding Stones were more just taking up space and they were more throwaway units I found that I was using. 
So I took out all the avalanche spells because they don't benefit our Braum. I do love the avalanche spell. It's really good if they just have a bunch of like random units in there that have really low health and I can just take them all out with avalanche. But to be honest, it's very rare when an occasion like that happens where I can play this card as a defensive card because it's slow. So I can't just play if they all attack at once when the round starts and I have to get lucky and hope that they make a move before um, they attack, so then I can use Avalanche to kind of help me out a little bit. The other reason why I took out Avalanche was because the same reason I took out the other spells, it was just taking up space. I had way too many spells in this deck. The next thing I took out was the Winter's Breath because I don't really need this ability because my worry isn't that my Braum isn't gonna have enough health to block a unit. Plus I have the flash freezes to do the job for me that this would do. And this is obviously more of a late game card, which by then I should have my Braum leveled up and creating Poros and helping me out defensively in that aspect. Plus this card isn't really a good defensive card since it's slow and not fast. The last card I took out was Trindamir. And I took out Trindamir because Although I really like Trinomir and I like hit the idea that he can just tank a hit in the defensive round and then just obliterate in the offensive round, I would much rather pull a Braum than a Trinomir. So I took out Trinomir just to give me more of an edge, to give me a card that would either be a Braum or be a card that would benefit my Braum in some way. And Trinomir was more of a solo guy and he wasn't benefiting Braum in any way. So I took him out because I want this main deck to just focus on getting Braum as strong as possible. So that's it for all the cards that I took out. Now let's get into the cards that I added. So the first cards that I added were Guile. And I'm kind of not liking it. I might take it out. To be honest, these were more filler cards when I was testing it. I don't re haven't really needed to use it but I also don't have any cards that I want to replace it with so they're kind of just there kind of for the early game when let's say I don't really have units to put in to guard against what they have I can use Guile and yes it's slow but sometimes it still helps in that early game I also put in Ravenous Flock for the same reason as Guile. It's more just a filler card. I'm still trying to figure out what I can put in in place of this, but it works very well with Guile in the early game if I get Ravenous Flock and Guile and I don't have any other options. The next card I put in was Blood for Blood, and the reason I have this card in is because we have units in here who can tank at least one hit and then I can create copies of it, and that's really good. Because then it just gives me that assurance that I will have units in my deck to be able to play if I don't have a Braum early on. So this is just to help more of the early game if I'm still waiting to pull a Braum. The next card that put in was Brother's Bond for obvious reason. Grant two allies plus two. If I have a Braum in, I can immediately give it plus two. It's a burst spell. It's just great all around. Plus, it adds that little extra pressure. If I have another unit in there that can take out another high powered, high defensive unit in there if they try to block. The next allies I have in here are the Ice Fail Archers. These are really good early on because they're not only good offensive card because they do three damage, but they're good defensive cards because they have the Frostbite ability. And honestly, these cards are just great for stalling until I could put Braum in and for keeping the playing field pretty even until that point. Don't call it a comeback story, but we put in the Culling Strike again because these cards are so good especially when you have units that can do the frostbite damage these work so well with the ice fail archers since if i if i have an ice fail archer in and i freeze an enemy then i can just use the cooling strike on them to just get rid of them so let's say very very early on they get in a threatening opponent that threatens to take a lot, a big chunk from my Nexus or to even take a big chunk from a Braum if I have a Braum in. I can put an Ice Veil Archer in or I can use the Flash Freeze and just get rid of that threat right off the bat. And once again, making a comeback in this deck, if you guys seen the early version of this deck, we have Might. 
And this is a good card for just a clutch situation or kind of just to throw our opponents off. So if my Braum, for example, only has two damage and they think that they can guard against it and they put in an opponent that has three or four defense, then I can use this card to kind of give it that extra boost to take it out. So the next card I have in here is the Iceborne Legacy. And to be honest, I still don't know how to feel about this card. Let's just say a perfect scenario happens, which happens pretty often in this deck, to be honest, though. Where I get my Braum leveled up and I'm generating a bunch of Poros. If I have an Iceborne Legacy, by the time that happens, I can use this on the Poros. And the Poros end up becoming just as much of a threat as the Braum himself. And we know we're going to be generating a lot of Poros with this deck. And then we have Intimidating Roar in here. I don't really have a card that can replace it right now, so I'm going to keep it in. And last but not le least, we got the Rhyme Tusk Shaman. And to be honest, I want three of these in. I could get rid of the Intimidating Roar. I could get rid of the Guiles because these Rhyme Tusk Shamans are so good. To be able to Frostbite the strongest enemy to just eliminate that threat right off the bat for the rest of the game as long as I keep the Rhyme Tusk Shaman alive is just very, very overpowered. And the reason I don't do that is because I do want to save my gems to be able to do more showcases in the other, the other decks. As you guys can see, I have other decks in the making. I just don't have the units for them right now. So I'm trying to save up for that. But let me know what you guys think if I should just start spending the gems to perfect this deck and just make it as good and overpowered as possible. Or if you wanna see me try out other decks and to explore a little bit. I'm going to leave that choice up to you guys, but for now, I'm just fine with sticking with one Rhyme Tusk Shaman. One will do the job. So right off the bat, we have Braum, Rhyme Tusk Shaman, Averis and Sentry, and Take Heart. This is a very, very good start. I'm going to keep all of them. So the early threats are obviously going to be Zed and whatever he's got to offer, which is going to be fine because we're going to have ways to be able to counter Zed with our Braum. We'll be able to take out, but the bigger threat is going to be Garen, but I feel like our Rhyme to Shaman is going to be able to take care of that. So let's just see how this plays out. So we're going to put in a Verison Sentry. So we're not going to put Braum in right now because we don't have any way to really power him up and we don't want to take that risk of putting him in since he only has zero power. So we're just going to put the Ice Veil Archer in. And we're going to freeze the War Chefs so that he's more inclined to play his Fleet Feather Tracker to defend. Now the reason why I'm not doing the Varus and Sentry right now is because I want to save the Varus and Sentry for the defensive stage. So we got him to waste a very annoying spell that could have been problematic to us later in the game. So obviously we count that as a win. So now would probably be a good time to play our Braum because we do have Might just in case he has something that can kill my Braum because my Braum has zero power. And if my Braum lives, we can use the Take Heart to just give it that more permanent threat. So I'm going to put the Varus and Sentry in and not Braum because it's too risky right now. And 
And then we'll just put in the Omen Hawk and then we'll end this round. And I know he was going to attack twice. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played the Omen Hawk. So we'll just have the um, well Brom right here, and then we'll have the Omen Hawk tank this hit. Okay, so we got lucky that he didn't have anything that could take my Brom out immediately. So we got another Averis and Sentry, but I think we want to put the Rhyme Tusk Shaman in to deal with this Loyal Badger. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, that's risky because if he has anything that can take out my Braum, because my Braum has zero damage. He could. I'm gonna take another risk and assume that he doesn't have anything since he didn't do anything last round. So he's probably going to pull my Braum to the Swiftling Lancer. Which means I can just tank the Warchief with my Rhyme Tusk Shaman and then we can freeze the Loyal Badger. But he's not going to do that. He's going to um, summon another guy. So we have options here. We can either stun all of them right now just to kind of throw them off. But I think we want to do something more immediately beneficial. So let's just put in another Averis and Sentry. And it looks like he's probably just going to end up ending this round. So we'll just end the round two. So we could get rid of this right now because we have the cooling strike. But let's first attack. So we could take this guy out right now, which is kind of risky because he's going to leave my Braum at 2 HP. But we have Might to be able to take him out there. And then we can put in the Averis and Sentry here. But if it all works out, then I can just use the Brahms uh, Take Heart. Okay, so that's fine. So I'm just going to use the Might right here. That's fine. So we got him to waste another very annoying ability that could be problematic for us in the later games. So let's go ahead and start leveling up our, our Braum. And then we'll take out this guy. Because our Rhyme to Shaman will just frostbite their other Swiftling Lancer next game. 
so it shouldn't be a problem. And then we also have our flash freeze to guard against the loyal badger. Now if I could get this guy in, that would be great before he attacks. Okay, so this is good because now we could take out his vanguard sergeant. <laughs> okay, so he's wasting all these abilities on his uh, low level units. So in the later game, we're gonna just gonna dominate. So he's doing all this just to get a couple damage off on my Nexus. Which in my opinion is a very bad move. Move. So we should just use the Intimidating Roar right now to kind of give us a fighting chance so he doesn't give damage on our Nexus because he's got a lot of units in and this is really going to throw him for a loop. And there we go, he just surrendered because his whole game plan was to just try to overwhelm me, but it just didn't work because I had too many things going against him with that. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see more content like this. Also check out my rank games that I do. I have this series called Road to Pro. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna rank up. It's gonna be great and you guys can be along with me in the journey. And that's gonna be all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all later. Bye.